Welcome uh, everybody to this uh, digital transformation in the real estate market uh, webinar. Um, I'm happy to welcome today two uh, speakers. So welcome, uh, Martin. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Martin Fry, and I'm the chief digital officer at Verit Immobilien. Uh, I started working at Verit almost around three years ago, and my mission was very clear, bring Verit to the digital age. And it has been a great journey so far, and I'm very happy to speak a little bit about that in this webinar. Maybe let me first uh, introduce uh, the company a little bit that you know where we are uh, working at. We are working uh, in the real estate business and we have a close focus on property management. Most of our employees are working there. Nevertheless, we have a lot of different departments that are working along the life cycle of the house. So that means we are doing a purchase of a house, a sales, construction, uh, we are doing marketing, we are also doing renovation, reconstruction. So it's pretty much everything around the life cycle of the house. We are located in all over Switzerland. Our head office is uh, located in Zurich and we have nine regional branches. And it's founded in the early 60s uh, as a family business. It's around 170 employees that are currently working. As I said, most of them in the property management business. Thank you, Martin. Um, Roland, uh, can you tell us a bit more about Alka and also why very chose to work with Alka in, on this project? My name is Roland Gaberturer. I'm working at Elke since uh, 10 years now in the area of enterprise content management. Uh, Elke is a Swiss company, as you can see, with uh, over 1,000 employees all over Switzerland, as well as some offshore centers where we implement solutions for our Swiss customers, as well as uh, other services and solutions. Uh, so uh, from uh, where we started with Elke was... Uh, that we have uh, an archiving solution which already was in place at Verit. So then uh, Verit was contacting us, yeah, how they can implement really a future uh, solution and the platform, how they can then in the future uh, work with their own processes. So that was the beginning of our discussion. And uh, as we have, also quite a lot of experience with over 80 uh, consultants and engineers in this area. Uh, yeah, we convinced them to, to work with us. And also we have uh, several years of experience with Bonita. And of course, this was also a plus as well, as we are located also over uh, different cities in Switzerland. Uh, where we can have quite a close uh, collaboration with each other. Okay, so talking about collaboration then, uh, can you tell us a bit more about how you spread the responsibilities between the two companies? So did you assign role and responsibilities and how did you maintain a, a good level of collaboration uh, to avoid, of course, the duplication and the inefficiencies within this project? Yeah, uh, what I said, we have already several years of experience with Bonita and uh, over 20 years of experience in the digitalization of processes. And uh, therefore we started really as a consultant and uh, where we discussed, of course, the whole solution, the platform, how it will be implemented. Uh, we advise them how they can prepare the platform and uh, infrastructure to be ready then to digitalize all those processes. Of course, the main responsibility was then to uh, implement the solution and deliver that to vary it so they can start really work with it. As well, what we did from our side was also training 
uh, because uh, where it was uh, planning to build up some own knowledge in the engineering area and uh, we helped them to bring up this uh, knowledge quite uh, fast. And on our side, we do the project management. We are making sure that all the implementations are uh, quite on a good level and interact with our subsystem. Uh, we have the process owner, we have uh, the, the training of our employees, and we also started to, uh, to engineer our uh, own processes. So for us, it's really important that we not only are users, but we, we see that process management as the core and the center of operation where we will like to, to start uh, building new processes on our own with the help of Elka. So this interaction between Elka and Verit is, is very key to make the whole project a success. Okay, great. So now we know a bit more about the team and how uh, you've separated all the responsibilities. Let's go a bit deeper. Um, and Martin, can you tell us a bit more how you initiated the project and, and what led you to this need for, for transformation, as we stated in the title? Yes. Well, at the beginning of this journey, we knew we would like to modernize the company. We would like to start a digital transformation, but it was not very clear on how to do that. Uh, always when you thinking about this transformation, you very soon start with technical issues. You think about the different tools, you think about the different platforms that you could implement. And this is always the first or the, the most obvious discussion that you have internally. But then soon after you realize this is just uh, the, the one side of, uh, of, of the whole project. Uh, it's furthermore an organizational uh, change. It has to do with the change of, of the culture. Employees will get used to the digital new age. They have to get adapted uh, with, with their processes that were analog and become now digital. So it's, it's all around this transformation and you have to discuss it from wide angles uh, for, for making it a success in the end. And for us, it was very obvious that uh, on a paper-based process management, you need to get rid of the paper. This is the first initial step. Without getting rid of paper, you cannot digitalize and cannot go into digital processes. So this was very key and uh, one of the first steps to get rid of the paper, to uh, do the in initial scanning for, for our 2 million actively managed uh, papers and also making sure that when uh, physical mail is coming in, that they get digitalized as well, which is the starting point most of the time for a process taking, pl uh, taking place. So when one of the key uh, uh, elements was just to make the realization that it's not only a technical change, but this is a, an important technical change, but it's just one side of the whole digital project. Okay, and, and you spoke about company culture. What what um, how did it translate really in terms of governance of this whole project yes as i said at first it was just a, a discussion about the technical issues and uh, i started as a head of a department uh, for projects of uh, in the digital age and we soon realized that this is just not enough because the discussions go a little bit higher than just about the technical uh, issues so very fast in the organization, I was talking a lot to the CEO because a lot of topics are just a company concern, not only technical. So this evolutionary process for us was uh, relevant uh, to create the new function as a chief digital officer that is reporting directly to the CEO that uh, is pushing and driving the whole transformation process, which is very important without uh, having a person, uh, the CEO that is driving this process, it's probably failing. So for us, it was an evolutionary process, creating this role as a chief digital officer. And I believe this is really a very good idea to do that in such a huge digital transformation situation. Yes, because the, the, tr the digital transformation was pushed by elements from the outside, I would say, or from also the top line and everything. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, sure. Um, 
we realize that we run into an efficiency problem. Whenever you are working in a mass market and in terms of property management, we are talking about the mass market because we are handling 50,000 objects almost. And if you're doing every single process step on a manual base and on paper, um, you're not very efficient and you're uh, too expensive uh, and your competitors that are also working on the digital transformation are just way ahead. So we realized we need to do something and we need to get rid of the paper. And in order to do that, we, we need to, to digitalize and create new automated processes that are more cost effective. And of course, uh, it was also very important that we can deliver the demands from our customer. Uh, they realized uh, on a digital age, they would like to get real-time data. They realized they would like to have new interfaces to, to work with, uh, with data on their system. They would like to have new reports. So that needs for us to be just ready to get everything in place in order to meet uh, this, uh, to, to this demand. Okay. We we um we touched a bit and maybe we can go deep, deeper, Martin, about the CDO because you are the CDO. So can you tell us a bit more what you wanted to achieve with with this role and um, how it plays into the project? Yes. Um, for the whole digitalization process, you need to have a specific role that is taking care of just everything. Um, because it's a new business, nothing has been in place so far, so you need to have a role, a specific role that takes care of just everything. It's the, uh, the technical deep dive, it's the organizational part, it's uh, the, the communication part, um, taking all the employees on this journey. So this is uh, very important for us to, to have a specific role taking care of that and being the, the, the spokesman for this digital transformation. And with this role, of course, we would like to gain efficiency, but this is just the first step for digital transformation. It's about new products. It's about uh, interacting with uh, platforms. It's in, uh, creating an ecosystem. And of course, coming up with new business models, generating new income streams from, from digital business. And this is only possible if you have a very structured, clear uh, business strategy. And uh, this has to be in one place, uh, which is organized through the whole company. Thank you, Martin. So let's now go deeper about the, the solution and how your two teams worked on a, one, worked on a, on a solution and how um, the project was tackled and what best practices you, you have for these kind of projects. Mm -hmm. Well, at the beginning, you have no idea how to do that. It's all new and it's very important to get a clear view on how the big picture would look like in the end. And we're talking about uh, the, the future of, of five to, to seven years, maybe. When you start at the phase number one, you still need to have in mind, how does my result look like in the end and how does it come all together? It's like uh, a big puzzle and you start with just the first ankles and you, you start generating these pieces and bits together to make it the big picture. And at the beginning, you have to gain a lot, about, a lot of knowledge. You have to get aware of uh, how your system works at the moment and what you have to do to achieve your goals for the big picture. So the initial phase took I would say almost a year to just getting clear what we really want and what we need and how this path could look like. And one of these paths was also to come up with the right partner that can support us. Which brings me to Roland. Yeah, to Roland, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, as we were involved uh, before we started implement uh, any pieces of the solution, uh, we spoke with varied about the IT strategy and the architecture of the of the whole platform because uh, you probably are aware that uh, 
a lot of companies have quite a lot of different applications already in the house. So the goal is to combine them to all together to really a proper platform where you can use then your uh, new solution. So it's really important to have a, a proper architecture. Uh, from our side, um, uh, it's important to have clear strategy, how you would like to implement really then the processes. And uh, we uh, recommend really to have a specific system for each uh, functional uh, requirement, especially in the archiving area and then the business uh, process execution. So uh, after defining this architecture, uh, we uh, discussed with Verit also how we would like to achieve then the end result of the whole uh, digitalization platform. Um, yeah, you have to be aware you cannot uh, implement everything at the beginning because that's quite a huge project. So, and you have to start small with the uh, small part of the of the whole solution. Also, the organization has to learn how to use then the new platform and how to work with the digital process because so far as you have heard from from martin they were working really on a paper-based process which is then quite different to a digital process and of course then during the first phases of the project the uh, people and the organization uh, learns how to use how to work with the system and they have a lot of new ideas how the solution can be improved and optimized for future needs and projects there. Yeah, and, and I think, um, Martin, you had also some requirements based on uh, the way your ecosystem is, is organized. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's, it's always a matter of make or buy decision. I mean, there are great startups coming up also in the real estate business. It's a hundreds of new companies coming up with good solutions. And for us, it's always important to realize, would we like to do something on our own and spend a lot of uh, time and money there? Because maybe it's unique and nobody else could do that. Or is it something that is more uh, commodity and it's a, a good idea to share a, a platform with the uh, with competitors and then other companies that having the same problems and uh, having a different company uh, giving us a solution for that. So this ecosystem thought is very key in our strategy. We would like to have a uh, property management platform that is uh, elementary for our property managers. But then if there is a platform doing a good solution for a specific problem, we would like to implement it 100% into our platform. So this uh, thought of ecosystem is very key for our whole uh, strategy. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's go now uh, into the, the actual solution and, um, and see uh, how it was, uh, how it was uh, deployed first maybe we can start in terms of uh, organization yes um this is something very key to us that we know as i said what is the big picture what is our strategy how can we go from phase number one to phase let's say number 10 um the realization of a new role of a chief digital officer is a uh, very important and for us, it's also very important that we uh, come up with uh, solutions that are for our employees because they're working with it all the time and they need to feel comfortable, they need to be happy with it, and it needs to solve a lot of problems for them to make the, their, their, their way easier in the daily business. And it's also about the communication that they know exactly what's going on, what are the, the past steps, what are the next steps, and that we have also a, a synchronized process that everybody knows and is aligned uh, what's going on. Okay, and then maybe uh, now that the solution is operating, uh, 
what value does it bring to uh, to both the business and uh, and the IT teams? Mm. Well, we have a lot of different core processes. And one of the first processes that we've done with Elka and is now already in production is uh, the input channel. So we are receiving uh, a lot of uh, incoming mail mails still physically, and we need to get them digitized so we can have a PDF and working with that. So one of the biggest benefit is that this physical mail will get scanned. We do a, some sort of a triage. That means not all of the documents that are coming in need to be uh, digitized. But those documents that are in need of digitalization, we do that with an external partner that is doing that on a daily basis. And then we need to make sure that this letter, which is addressed to a person, comes digitally to the correct person or the team or maybe also the regional office, depending on what it is and uh, who is addressed. And then this is most of the time the starting point of a process that is taking place further digital. So the value for the property manager is that he receives everything from an external source in one place. As I said before, we are eager to create a property management platform where Bonita is uh, in the background uh, taking care of all these tasks. And the property manager has everything in one place. He sees exactly uh, which deadlines are due for which uh, documents or which tasks and it's everything structured for him and also for people that are working with the property manager to support. So the goal is to get more transparency, uh, more quality, and also an efficient way of, uh, of uh, working on the, the processes. And in terms of IT, it is very important that we have a streamlined uh, IT architecture. Uh, we need to reduce the complexity of single interfaces. In the past, there were hundreds of interfaces between programs and uh, between tools and platforms, and this is almost not to be handled in this digital uh, world with, uh, with processes. So the reduction of complexity is uh, one of the key solutions that we are aiming for, that we have one structured system that have adapters to different platforms. And this is uh, one of the key uh, important uh, uh, things that we are aiming for. Okay. And in, oh, go and ahead. in this Sorry. example, yeah. maybe, in this example, maybe, when we are talking as an example of a termination letter coming in through mail, then it goes through all the processes. And this, this letter of termination is the starting point of the process termination of a client. Of a tenant mm -hmm. and this is then the, the phase number one or task number one and all the further tasks are then managed in Bonita and this is uh, important that we have all in one platform. Okay and and Roland maybe you can tell us a bit more about how all of this is is working together technically. Yeah, as Marty mentioned so it's really important to have proper interfaces for each uh, application or service which is used uh, in this whole process. Um, therefore, we uh, implemented a service-oriented architecture, uh, which is based on our ELGA uh, backbone framework, which uh, have clear focus on using existing services uh, where we are able to, to use them. Um, because yeah, some applications don't have right now proper services which are available available for such a process. Uh, there we uh, implemented uh, additional adapters uh, for using those applications as a service. And if there is a replacement of those applications, we can easily replace the adapter and then adapt directly those services and from the application side nothing has to be changed. So uh, that's really the, the, the focus to have a, a clear proper architecture which can be used and uh, involved in the future. 
also what we have seen the digitalization of paper was quite a, a big task during this project uh, right now we have about uh, 75000 uh, dossiers in the platform and more or less half a million documents which are managed uh, from the system um, from the they are stored in the archive system and uh, uh, Bonito is taking care of the processes. Um, right now what is really used is this incoming mail process what uh, Martin was speaking about and over all this uh, different location. As you can imagine uh, now with the digital uh, process you can easily switch the process from one location to another which was uh, with the paper-based process uh, quite inefficient and uh, this helps very a lot now in the daily business. Okay Jan you spoke about uh, uh, a platform Martin and Roland both of you mentioned this term and um, how do you think this platform approach supports really the, the digital transformation? Uh, so, as, as you know, Bonita uh, has quite a lot of functionality and different benefits uh, for helping you in the digital transformation and in those processes. Um, our approach was really to use uh, Bonita as a service platform to execute all the tasks, all the processes there. And uh, on the application side so user interface we have our own framework which we use to proper integrate the archive system with the uh, process platform so there we have then the the integration and so people can easily work with the process and the papers and uh, collaborate on each task uh, also in a team because all the the uh, people which are taking care of those real estates, they're working in teams together and so they can share tasks between uh, team members and uh, assign it to a team member and work on that. So that means uh, at the end we have really an end-to-end business process which is covered with this platform. Of course there is a continuous improvement and uh, optimization uh, which is going on and also will go on uh, in the next months and year, years for sure to be at the end then more efficient uh, on the daily basis. Okay so so yes you 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 uh, you spoke about this continuous improvement uh, this is something that you you do in collaboration with with Verit right? Yes uh, uh, of course, from from our side, we we help them to bring up new ideas, uh, new solution, new ideas how to implement things, and of course, from the process side, where it uh, brings up their uh, new ideas how the process can be improved. So, and and Martin, the the story doesn't stop with the first process, right? What was the what's sort of the next step to uh, to this project? Yes, this is just the beginning. This is phase number one. This is our homework in order to uh, come to the, the fun part. And the fun part is that we would like to come up with this uh, very process management platform. Uh, the first initial steps were done. The first step is to, to bring in all the information coming through physical mail. And it's not stopping there. Then the process for the, the property managers start. There are checklists, there are different things they have to do in order to perform their processes. And our goal is to bring everything together, our own processes, and also integrate the third party platforms and tools uh, in our platform management uh, uh, situation, because then everybody knows that is working on a task when is it due? When do we have to do the next step? And everybody knows exactly what is going on. And there is no missing parts in our processes. So 
So third party platforms is very important. And of course, that we have a structured task management system. Um, when we are talking about nine different branches uh, doing actually the same work, but in different locations and with different leadership. So sometimes it just happens that the process looks a little bit or slightly different in terms of uh, the regional offices. And what we need to achieve is that we come up with a structured process and task management, that every process in Switzerland is exactly the same. Every uh, employee is working the same way on the same uh, processes that are done every day. And in the end, we're looking forward to uh, having an ecosystem where we can uh, integrate different partners. And if there is a new startup coming up maybe next year, with a great solution, we would be able to implement their ideas as well, so we can make the best benefit out of it. And this is our goal, and I would say it takes some years to go. <laughs> but the, yeah. the, the training was done, and we are very happy that uh, uh, now it works. Every employee is now working digitally, and especially in a corona time like this, it's so important that our employees can work from home and they have access to all their uh, dossiers, that they have access to the incoming mail. And so it helps us a lot to get organized during these hard times. And you really benefit from uh, an extensible platform in, in all terms, extensible place, Absolutely. extensible to systems. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we will now have a, a conclusion and summarize best practices and takeaways. Um, before we go to the conclusion, I remind uh, our audience that if you want to ask a question, you can use the, the panel that is in, in your interface. So you can write the question and I will read it for our speakers uh, just after our takeaways. So Martin, let's, uh, let's conclude and, and summarize for our audience the, the key takeaways that you, you got uh, from, from the project so far. Yeah, these were our learnings from the last uh, two or three years. And uh, we realized that it is so important that the top management and especially the CEO pushes this project. And every employee knows that this is one of the key projects for the future success. And uh, alongside with that, to create a special role, uh, in my case, as a chief digital officer, taking care of the whole digital transformation and not only the technical part is very key to make the whole project a uh, success. And what we've all also learned at the beginning is that we need to have a clear view on the big picture. And when you know exactly how it should look like, then you can start with phase number one. But all those phases that you're doing has to benefit the big picture. Of course, when you're working on something and you realize uh, there might be a slight uh, difference and it makes sense to adapt this, this strategy, this is always possible. But you should be aware of the big picture before you start. And then plan the iterations, as Roland also was telling before, um, do the agile approach. Start small, do little pieces, little releases, do an incremental uh, change of the platform. So it's not a huge release and you work for three years and then you have a big release. Start small, do the first initial phase, and then do process after process, and so enlarge the whole system. This is definitely the, the right approach in such a big project. And uh, it's also very important that uh, the change management becomes a critical role inside the company. It's not only technical, it's a lot about culture, it's processes in the whole organization that is different. So you need to have an established change management system to, to communicate, to take all the employees uh, with you on this journey, because without the employees uh, accepting it, it won't be a success. And the last one is uh, one of the most important parts. Uh, be sure who to choose as a partner, because it's not just one project and it's done in half a year. This is all, almost like a marriage. Uh, you do this uh, system with a partner and you need to be sure at the beginning that this partner can hold up these expectations in terms of uh, technical uh, issues, in terms of, uh, of communication, in terms of size. You would like to have a suitable partner that takes this whole journey with you and supports you in all these manners that you need to perform alongside this journey.
Thank you, Martin. Um, I already have, uh, so let's move to questions because I think they are a good transition. Um, we have already some questions here. Uh, Martin, when you look back, uh, what would you do uh, differently? Um, actually, not, not so much. I think we, we've done it quite well. We took enough time to make a proper plan and even though that it meant that we had to, to postpone some of the phases, maybe a month or two months or a quarter or so, um, I believe that we've handled it quite well. And I wouldn't change so much. I just uh, realized that uh, it turned out well and taking enough time is certainly important, but I wouldn't change it because I, I think it, we did it quite well. Okay. Roland, maybe on your side, anything that you would do differently or you, you were also comfortable with the way uh, everything uh, was happening? Yeah, the, yeah in general, what, what uh, I agree to Martin, um, what, what you have to know, it's always uh, difficult if you start new with a new solution and no one has really worked with it so far. It's quite difficult for them to understand how the this new system is working. So that's always a little bit a challenge at the beginning. How do you start with the business uh, that they are uh, familiar uh, with the solution and they can also give already some good input in the beginning of the project. But of, uh, uh, it's, it's also really important that you uh, as a uh, company which supports this digitalization yeah that you have a close collaboration collaboration really with the business side as well as uh, also with the IT side really to work close together and I think that that was the case with Verity. Okay and I, I have a question more on um, on the resistance to change so how many employees resisting going digital and how did you convince them to do it did you have mm -hmm. resistance or not really <laughs> well there is always a little bit of resistance um, and it's it, it's funny um it's not about the age there are older people that are not resilient at all and there are young 20 year old uh, employees that are resilient totally and they oppose to it so I think it's more about uh, a personal approach of every employee, how they are uh, handling digitalization also in the, their private life. And it's uh, in, in our case, uh, we are not having so much uh, opposition. Everybody knows that we have to do that. Everybody knows that it will become better. Um, sometimes, of, co of course, people wish that we were already there, so one or two years later, because now we're working on it, it's hard for everybody to change, and there is this extra work for everybody. So sometimes people wish that we were a little bit further down the road, um, but in general, uh, there is a big understanding, and almost everybody is, uh, is looking forward to this, uh, this move. But uh, definitely, if there is opposition, you have to explain why you're doing something, why it's important. And uh, sometimes you need to take the fear away from the employees. And with a good communication, most of the time you're very lucky and uh, you bring everybody aligned on the project. Okay. Um... So I have a question about the frequency, well, the, the changes and um, um, do you consider that, that changes is, uh, there is a loop in the life cycle of changes? And I think we, we touched it a bit with iteration and everything and, and the need for smaller steps iterating. Yes, I mean, we have different iterations of course we have a roadmap what we would like to do in the future so that this is something that we can plan in terms of releases so we have okay. specific projects where we have a spe special focus on it and uh, we, we try to do that on a regular basis, on an agile approach and then of course there are demands from customers and demands from our employees 
And this is a continuously improvement uh, part that we need to take care of, that uh, we can implement good ideas from the employees, that they all also know that they are relevant when they experience something that is not perfect in their mind, that we can work uh, something out and uh, to, to create new features. And so we have the roadmap that we're implementing, but also continuously improving the system which we have in, uh, in, in smaller releases. Okay, so like a product, yeah. yeah. Um, so I have a question more in terms of, uh, of financial effort. The question, the question is the following. In your opinion, what financial effort, so percentage of turnover, and in terms of resources, increased percentage in resources dedicated to digitization that you must invest in this digital transformation? I think there is two questions in one. So it's more, does it have an impact on, on the, uh, the turnover in your team and the, the, the resource that you need after and before digitization, maybe? That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we certainly see a shift going on from the business itself towards digitalization uh, uh, skilled person working in, in our department. So when we used to have maybe a hundred people for the same amount, then we look forward that, we, that the employees are more efficient with the new tools. And in order to do that, we need employees that are working on the digital solution. So we see a little shift in uh, going towards uh, uh, the, the skills of IT and project management and digitalization, but in the end there is no need to to reduce the amount of employees working on the business side because we would like to expand our business to get new business. So that just means that people are getting more efficient, so they can do more work in the same amount of time. But there is definitely a shifting towards IT and uh, digitalization, and uh, of course more people means uh, it costs money. And this is uh, always something that you have to, uh, to consider. But in terms of a big digital transformation, it's a plan that you're doing, a return on invest, that usually takes care, it depends on how deep you do that, uh, from at least five to seven years. And if you consider that, um, it, it depends on uh, your integration and how many people are or skilled workers working in your company already how much can you do on your on your side and where do you need uh, the support from a company like elka for example that is supporting you so in the end it's a, a return on invest calculation uh, that is relevant also uh, for the top management in order to make the right decisions and and maybe um, some other point here is um of course, you you want uh, business improvement, so you probably already see the best, the better, a better uh, customer service and everything. But do you think, or do you already see some uh, new business models or new business uh, possibilities from this, this digitization? Yes, absolutely. I mean, at the moment we are we are eager to be more efficient. But this is not very much a new business model. It's the same, the same work, just digitalized. But this is the base on how we can improve uh, or uh, go towards new business that is not existing at the moment. Um, and of course, we are looking into new business models uh, where we can benefit from this homework that we are doing at the moment. Uh, I cannot talk too much at the moment, but there are some uh, serious uh, thoughts uh, how we can do that in the future. Um, because we also see in a mass market where we are in property management, uh, it gets more and more a uh, commodity market. And in a commodity market, you do not gain a lot of percentage and uh, margin. So, of course, we are looking into new business models where we can complement uh, these actions and take benefit of this platform. And maybe we can make this platform available for, for other sources and go in a different digital age and where we are performing a service for somebody else, which was not the case before, because we were just focusing on our own stuff. And when we're able to do that in our platform, we can think about releasing that to different companies, maybe. So these are a lot of thoughts that we are already taking, but now we are first need to have the property management platform in place that is working 
perfectly and then we go to the next level. It's phase number 20, the business models. <laughs> <laughs> we have yeah. number one at the moment. Yeah, this could have been a, a very nice conclusion, but I have a, another a little question uh, that I will take, which is uh, how do you handle other communication channels like email, WhatsApp? Uh, are they also connected to the Bonita platform? Yes, this is absolutely the goal. At the moment, we have so many different channels. And uh, most of the time, if uh, a tenant, for example, doesn't get a receipt uh, or an answer within 10 minutes, then they just take the next level uh, of, uh, of communication. So they are calling up, they are writing an email, maybe they send a message on WhatsApp. So we have for the same situation, three different input channels. And uh, this is something that we are really keen of to have a structured way of input channel. So wherever the input comes, it will flow directly to uh, the task management and Bonita in the background uh, where they where can handle that. So in the okay. end, it yeah. doesn't matter where it comes from. It needs to be structured and it needs to go directly into the task management system. Um, a little question that is speaking about case management versus BPM. So I don't know if it's more Roland that, that wants to answer this or when someone asks and says, uh, when we start modeling from the current situation, isn't it case management instead of BPM? I think it really, I mean, I'll start answering this, but it really depends on your process. So if you have what we call the structured process where you know each of the steps, like for example, the termination, it's always happening in the same way. So that's a structured process then it's BPM. When there is a decision that needs to be made uh, at some point of the process and when the decision will trigger a different process, then it's case management. But uh, within Bonita, the, 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 the good thing is that you can handle both uh, structured or unstructured. I don't know if uh, Roland or Martin, do you implement unstructured already or for the moment you just implement structured processes? The moment is just structured. Okay. Maybe Roland can uh, tell a little bit more about that. Yeah, right now there, there is only an approach to have structured processes. Um, but of course, with the solution they have, they, they can still collaborate with each other. So over the, the platform, but it's not really a, a case management solution yet. But it could be. I mean, uh, the, the the platform has the capacity, yeah. right? So exactly. it depends how you address exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think that was uh, the last question that I got. So um, I thank you very much for your time and your um, sharing your story. And uh, maybe we can speak in a, in a year to to see where you are uh, and and how you gain from from this project. Um, I wish you a, a very uh, a very good day. Uh, and uh, and if you have other questions for our audience, uh, I mean, from the audience to Martin or Roland, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we can uh, we can uh, contact them for you, and uh, and they will be happy to answer. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.